Memphis, Tennessee, this Saturday at 5 p.m., the Pursuit of God Transformation Center, the inner city church that thinks outside the box, will be having Saturday night service at the East Campus. This service has been designed with you in mind with passionate worship, prevailing prayers, and a powerful word. This Saturday, 5 p.m., the Pursuit of God Transformation Center at the East Campus, 1708, Veracruz. People of purpose coming to the Transformation Center so that you can come out with the victory this Saturday, 5 p.m., 1708, Veracruz off Mount Moriah and White Station. If you work Sunday, Saturday night service. If you sleep late, Saturday night service. If you want a whole day of rest, Saturday night service. Sports fanatic, Saturday night service. You want a date with Jesus anime, Saturday night service. This Saturday at the Pursuit of God Transformation Center, 1708 Veracruz, 5 p.m. For more information, call 901 353 5772. Saturday night. Hey, I'm Pastor Floyd, the Pursuit of God Church, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. One church, two locations. I simply want to let you know that we are humble and grateful that you would take the time to tune into our telecast today. Our prayer, and I sincerely mean, we have been praying that this telecast will be enlightening to you, that it will be inspiring, encouraging, that you will hear, feel, or see something in this telecast that will cause a transformation to come in your life. Listen, we are known as the Transformation Center. We want you to do two things. We want you to grab a pen, paper, so that you can take some notes and use this information that we're sharing with you today. And if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you're sensing some value in this, I personally want to invite you out to be my special guest here at the Pursuit of God Church. So get ready, get, get your expectations high, because I truly believe that there is a word from the Lord that's coming through me specifically for you today. God bless you. I want to get, begin to talk to you today how important it is for us to stay focused in faith. Somebody say focus, focus. In, faith. in faith. And it's amazing that I've gone to a lot of other churches. You know, Co-Pastor and I are known for marriage and vision, but I can't remember the last time I really taught on vision at the Pursuit of God Church. And so we went up and did the vision conference at Pastor Rhonda's church, and to quote her, she said it changed the dynamics of her church. Well, I want to change the dynamics of my church too. Well, the church that I pastor. You know, it ain't my church, but y'all know what I'm saying. I want to change the dynamic of this church. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be just a blessing to others and not be a blessing to the local house that the Lord has given me stewardship over. So I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. Now, uh, one of the things, one of the anointings that's on this house, uh, Ron, good to see you. Good to see you today, Ron. Bless you, man. Something interesting. You know, you know how sometimes you can't explain what's happening, but Ron, were you, I know you were All-American. Were you McDonald's All-American too? You, the first in Memphis. Wow. Something's, you, in this, the last 10 days, you are the third or fourth McDonald's All-American to be at the Pursuit of God Church. Now, I don't know exactly, because Elliot Perry was at the church Tuesday. Will Barton come to church. And I don't know if Tyreek Black was an All-American, but he might have been an all I mean, a, a McDonald's all but I don't understand that, but it, it's something specialized, because that's a unique. So I, God, so when, when, when y'all prophets figure that out, y'all come tell me later what that, what that means. Now, that don't mean go to McDonald's and get a bigger size. Now, I know it don't mean that. Amen. But something, something, God is up to something with that. Are y'all at 1 Corinthians 13 and 13? Now, and it reads, and now abide it faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Hope. Somebody say hope. hope. And, charity. and charity. These three. But the greatest... The greatest, somebody said the greatest. the greatest. The greatest is charity. Now, a lot of people have a problem with that. Matter of fact, I heard Fred Price said charity was not the greatest. He said faith was. I love Fred Price, but I'm going to go with the Bible. Amen. He says that the, the scripture says, and now abide it, faith, hope, charity, 
these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, I want you to begin to look at compartmentalize these in this way right here. Somebody said faith. Faith is, is this is a good place to take notes right here. Faith is my identity in Christ Jesus. Faith is when I have a revelation and an understanding of my DNA, my inheritance, what I am qualified for as a believer, what I'm entitled to, and what I have an endowing power to do because I recognize who I am, whose I am, why I am, and what I have the ability to do in Christ Jesus. So I have an unshakable, unwavering, doesn't matter what it looked like, after I've done all that I do, I'm still going to stand on the word of God. Now, it, so that's what, that's, what, that's what faith is. Now, the next thing it says that faith, these three things, the second of these three things is hope. Now, I want, you to, I want to give you a little different perspective. I love to take familiar scriptures that you have and give you a greater revelation on, the, on what you already have. So, so, so whenever I, I give you a familiar scripture, don't say, oh, yeah, doc, I know that one, doc. Yeah, yeah, I already know that one. Yeah, doc, no, no, no calm down. Somebody said, there is more. There's more revelation. As smart as you are, and you, oh, you got, oh, you're so smart. You're so smart. But there's more revelation to be found in that particular word. So first faith, faith is my identity, then hope. Hope is my expectation. Somebody say expectations. Now, I, 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 here's a revelation that the Lord gave me too, that hope is an expectation of that which is to come from God. Matter of fact, say that hope is an expectation of that which is to come from God. Now, is it safe to say that we can say that hope is vision? If hope is an expectation of things that are to come from God, so I ask you again, is it safe to say that hope is vision? All right, so we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we understand that faith is my identity. My faith is who I am, whose I am in Christ Jesus. And then it says faith, then hope. Hope is my expectations or hope is the vision. And then it says charity. What is charity? Charity is not just love, but charity is a love that I'm willing to give for the sake of the success of someone else. Charity is I love God so much and I love God's people so much. I'm willing to take what my faith has produced and what my expectations is attracting so that I can make something good happen for another. See, see, listen, you know, we say the confession all the time. God is using someone to use their wealth, their substance, their influence, their power, their ability to make something happen for me that I can't make happen for another. Well, what if you are the you for somebody else? What if you be the one that has to use your wealth, your substance, your power, your influence, your ability to make something good happen for somebody else? Or have you been so selfish that you've only been expecting to receive and not expecting to give? That's not love. That's lust when you've only positioned yourself that you're trying to figure out what you're going to get out of the situation. Somebody say, I want to be a giver. I want to give and give more abundantly. See, the Bible says, if you give, if you give, if you give, then it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into my bosom. We've got to get the revelation that giving is a cycle, hallelujah, that is fueled by my love, my faith, and my expectation in God. That's why the Bible says a threefold cord is not easily broken. Well, what's the three cords? The cords have to be faith, hope, and love. When I'm walking in faith, when I'm walking in love, when I'm walking in hope, the devil ain't got a chance. Let me say that again. When I'm walking in faith, now, now remember what faith is. When I'm walking in my identity that I know I'm a man of God. 
Even though I did some things wrong yesterday, I thought about doing some things wrong today, and the Lord is yet still working on me, I'm still a man of God. Somebody need to say that right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm still a woman of God. He's still working on me, but I'm still his. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Listen, and when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, even when you mess up, you can repent. See, if you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, when you mess up, you're afraid God going to throw you away. I'm not disposable to God. Matter of fact, say that I'm not disposable to God. God ain't going to just use me up or get mad at me or look at my dysfunctions and ball me up and throw me away. Hallelujah. God had plans for me. He didn't change the plans because I messed up. I didn't use my value because they stumped on me, because they spit on me, because they lied on me. I am still precious in the sight of God. Praise the Lord. So if I'm precious in the sight of God, I'm going to be precious in my sight too. I may not be precious in your sight, but me and God are a majority. You're going to get the revelation later. So faith, hope, and love, I got to have faith. I got to have an expectation, an unwavering, unshakable conviction of who I am in Christ Jesus. And I got to have an expectation that in spite of what I see today, in spite of what I experienced yesterday, and in spite of what the prognosticators are talking about tomorrow, I still believe that something good's about to happen. I still believe that all things work together for my good because I love God and because I'm called according to his purpose. If I just hold on, this situation is going to change. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Somebody say it's going to change. Matter of fact, it's already changing. And listen, for some of y'all, it's already changed. You just hadn't what you hadn't got the revelation that a change has come. Shh. See, some of y'all got that Juneteenth spirit. Y'all know about Juneteenth, don't you? That's why you ain't gonna never catch me at no Juneteenth celebration. What that to celebrate? You've been free for a year and a half and you just figured out, I'm mad at somebody. I'm mad. Somebody getting whooped. You mean I've been free for a year and a half and I've still been eating chitlins, hog mogs, and had to, to do what master say? Somebody finna get a whoop. No celebration. It's like finding out you've been retarded for a year and a half. Let's celebrate because I've been retarded for a You let me catch one of y'all at a June too. Let me catch you. I wish I would catch you. And that's the spirit. Some of us are free and don't know we're free. Matter of fact, shout out, I'm free. I'm free. Shout out again, I'm free. I'm free. Well, look, take the chains off you. Do you know? Ooh, this, this one in the message. But do you know how they t train elephants? If you go to the circus, the biggest elephants don't have chains on them. They, they don't, they're, not, they're not chained up. Why? They have a chain on their leg, and they have a stake in the ground, and they have conditioned the elephant over the years that because this chain is on you and that stake in the ground, you can't go out of the rims of this circle. See, some of you don't realize that you don't have chains on you no more. But you're still running around in this little circle. You're still, you're still hanging with the same broke folks. You're still hanging with the same depressed folks. You're still hanging with the same ignorant folks. You're still hanging with the same self-pity folks. Why? Because you don't realize that the chains are off for you. Glory to God. Somebody shout out, I'm free again. Clicks Classes. Connecting layman unto kingdom commitment. Starting February 1st at 7 p.m., come experience relevant classes that create an atmosphere for people to not only be healed, but to bond and fellowship together in Christian unity. Classes offered are Family God for the Married Men, The Real Housewives of the POG, Married Women, Guy Code, Single Men, Living Single, Single Women, The XYZ, Middle and High School, Children's Success Institute, Elementary, and Toddler classes are also available. If you're looking for a true, loving, supporting cast for tests, trials, and tribulations, you want to be a part of Clicks. 
at the Pursuit of God Transformation Center starting February 1st at 7 p.m. Classes will be held at the Pursuit of God Church North Campus, 3171 Signal Street in Memphis, Tennessee. Give us a call, 901-353-5772 for more information or visit thepursuitofgod.org. Welcome back to the Transformation Center. Now, now it says faith, hope, and love and charity, but the greatest of these is charity. Now go to, go to Hebrews uh, 11 and 1, and it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what? The of now, now, here's the craziest thing that we've been taught in Christianity. You know, y'all asking God for too much. You, you know, here's another crazy one. You know, I just, I just expect the worst. I, I just said, I just expect the worst. Now, remember the revelation we got here. Whatever you expect is the check that you collect. See, we had somebody in leadership position. I had to get them out of here. They talking about don't expect nothing. Man, that ain't the DNA of this house. That ain't biblical to tell folk not to expect nothing when the Bible says faith is the substance of things that you expected. So if you ain't expecting God to do nothing, you don't even need no faith. And you know God gave every man a measure of faith and he said without faith it's impossible to please God so if you ain't it, come on now. So this scripture says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna mess your peanut religion up. I need to always be in a state where I'm expecting God for something. Let me say that. I need to always be in a state where I'm expecting God, where I'm believing God, where I'm trusting God for something. Let me tell you a revelation the Lord gave on. That's why the rich get richer. It ain't because they necessarily greedy. It ain't, it ain't because they, they shyst us. No, Donald Trump is always expecting something. Oprah Winfrey always expecting something. But you done got your, well, you know, I, I just don't want nothing. That, that's, I don't, I don't, you know, God, he, he, the law never does anything else for me. He's done enough. <laughs> Sit up here lying in the church, lying in the church. You already mad because he ain't he ain't do something for you this week, but you up there singing and fly. If the law oh never and them song be feeling good too. Never some, some of y'all I said don't say they finna start to crying up in here now. They finna It's enough. I doing them ugly cries on them songs. You don't realize the reason you're doing the cry because there's an inward battle going on saying, Don't you sing that song. You know you need the Lord to do something for you right now. Baby got a light bill due. Baby need a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Telephone disconnect. And you up there singing if the Lord don't do anything else for me. The Holy Spirit and you saying stop that line here on the inside. You. Stop that line. Just stop that line. <laughs> Long, I don't need nobody but Jesus. Long, long, long as I got, don't need nobody. And you hate no other folk when you see them out at Valentine's Day. Your friend got a date and you mad as a motor scooter. Well, you said, I'm going to leave you here with Jesus. I need something else. I'm going on a date tonight. And I need more than Jesus. I need Jesus, but I need a little more.
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So that means that faith, faith is the substance of that which I'm expecting. That means faith is the substance of the vision that I have. We don't walk by sight, but listen, we walk by envision. What's envision? The vision that was blown on me through the word of God that's on the inside of me. Somebody say, I don't walk by sight. I walk by invisible. Glory to God. I ain't walking by what I see out there. I'm walking by what he said and I see on the inside of me. That's why, I listen, you won't be stressed and get high blood pressure and go crazy by what you see out there because there's something, the kingdom of God is within. When you realize you got the king, his dominion, power, and authority on the inside of you, when you got him within, what's without don't bother you. And you won't go without. Because of what you have within. See, the only reason you're going without because you ain't got within. When you get him within, you will not go without any good thing. You will not lack any good thing. I know it's hard for you to believe this. This ain't what Big Mama and them taught you. This ain't what Reverend Sloopfoot and them taught you. They taught you to get on the moan and mention moan. Sometimes I can't say a word. I just got to moan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better say something. Yeah. Hey. Tell them, you better say something. Woo. Tell you what, let me tell you what little Ricky gave me this revelation. We had a crisis in our home one day. And prophet little Ricky stood up. He said, if we don't speak up, we'll fall down. You ain't got time to shut up. You better speak up. Speak your situation up. Don't you gonna fall down. Already got. Now listen, listen, listen. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Listen to this. Listen to this. For by it, what? By faith and expectation. By faith and hope. By faith and vision, the elders obtained a good report. What did they do? The elders they did what? Obtain. If they obtained, that means they didn't have. I said if they obtained, that means they didn't always have it. That means, so don't you get mad when somebody get tell you about, well, you know, sister, such she used to do. But she in faith now. She has up. up. Why? Because she got in faith and expectation. And if God is no respecter of person, if mother such and such, who used to be a hoochie mama, can obtain a, then so can I. If deacon pimp player, pay, player can obtain a, then so can I. If such and such, who's a third generational welfare recipient, but now is a business owner, can obtain a then why because God is not a respecter of persons but he's a respecter of principles and if I apply the principles it doesn't matter if I'm fat black and ugly tall bald and can't squall it doesn't matter if I apply the principles the principles gonna work Somebody said the principles are not prejudice. I'm working the principles. I'm working them principles. And they working for me. They working for me. I said they working for me. And they'll work for you too if you work them. Well, it ain't working for me. You ain't working it. 
If you don't work it, it ain't going to work for you. Now, now, it says the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which were, things which, does it say out there? No. Things which were, let me see, you messed me up now, was it? Oh, so that things which are seen, okay, now were, were not made of the, can I preach this sermon today? I ain't going to get none of my check. You can help me preach it, but you ain't getting none of my check. <laughs> so things which are made were not made by things which appear. So if things that are not, not made, were not made by things which appear. Why am I going to let that which appears bring me fear? Let me say that again. If things were not made by things which do appear, why am I going to let that which appear brings me fear? I'm going to mess you up now. Because what I see ain't reality. What I don't see is reality. I know that don't make no sense, but I'm so glad the God I serve don't make no sense. I'm so glad I live a life that don't make no sense. If you try to make God make sense, you might miss the blessing that God got for you. Make no sense. Woo! Memphis, Tennessee, this Saturday at 5 p.m., the Pursuit of God Transformation Center, the inner city church that thinks outside the box, will be having Saturday night service at the East Campus. This service has been designed with you in mind with passionate worship, prevailing prayers, and a powerful word. This Saturday, 5 p.m., the Pursuit of God Transformation Center at the East Campus, 1708 Veracruz. People of purpose coming to the Transformation Center so that you can come out with the victory this Saturday, 5 p.m., 1708 Veracruz off Mount Moriah and White Station. If you work Sunday, Saturday night service. If you sleep late, Saturday night service. If you want a whole day of rest, Saturday night service. Sports fanatic, Saturday night service. If you want a date with Jesus anime, Saturday night service. This Saturday at the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. 1708 Veracruz, 5 p.m. For more information, call 901 353 5772. Saturday night. And there you have it. You've just experienced what takes place regularly at the Transformation Center. Listen, we just want to invite you to come on in and have a real encounter. Go to our website at thepursuitofgod.org or call us at 901-353-5772 so that we can give you more information about what we're doing and keep you abreast to all of the services and the events that we have. We trust that God met you at the point of your expectation and we just encourage you, come and fellowship with us at the Transformation Center. Thank you.